This is a continuation of a series of different type of rain screens. And I want to share one with you in this episode that is awesome. If you're not really clear what a rain screen is, check out this video. It'll define a rain screen and it'll tell you all the reasons why a rain screen might be good for your building. I want to show you a really cool rain screen system by Cladding Corporation. I'll leave a link down below and I really wish you would go to their website and see how all the, the sidings that, that they, they can hold against the buildings as a rain screen really highlights the building. And I think it might look really cool on a shipping container building as well. Granted, this system is a little bit over the top for a small single family home made of shipping containers, but still there's some elements in here that you might be able to glean from and use in your shipping container building. Now there are three different finishes that the Cladding Corp uses for their rain screen. One of them is terracotta, a second one is fiber cement board, and the third one is ceramic stone. Now this one here on this sample is a fiber cement board just to give you an idea how it, uh, what how the system works. And the what what it has in here that's somewhat unique by the cladding corp is the bracket that they use to hold the whole system together against the building. So if we were going to use this for a shipping container, we would have obviously the corrugated siding so the corrugating siding would need something a little bit more flat for this to be this bracket so the aluminum brackets that they have to be fastened against so let, imagine that the shipping container is back where my hand is and then you would have a another board a sheathing board outside of this i'd recommend actually using zip sheathing because on there it has additional air and water barriers on it and it's really really efficient it's all in one package then they what they've shown this orange is they're showing a waterproofing membrane and then they have some shims here and then they have aluminum bracket now this aluminum bracket has got interlocking with slotted screw holes to where it can be adjusted to make sure that if, it, if the wall is not exactly plumb, they can plumb it with those shim and, the, and also with the, um, the slots. What they boast about is that they don't really need shims and have something called like a thumb type of press, which is aluminum uh, sliver that's on this bracket that allows it for uh, to be adjusted like, like a shim would. And inside of here, there, it's holding the, the insulation. And what they're showing here is rock wool. Now rock wool has about, for this size, it's about, I don't know, almost, let's say three and a half inches. I think this is a little bit less, but three and a half inches of rock wool will give you about an R15 value for insulation. And that is enough in some homes and some buildings. If you're doing a commercial building, you might need quite a bit more. But ideally is that this rock wool could probably be considered by your local inspector to be a continuous uh, insulation, even though it's held by these brackets, you would have to get their approval for that. And the, that's, that's significant because in the energy code, they require continuous insulation in some cases, depending on what climate zone you're in and that sort of thing. Now, if you need an additional insulation that's continuous, that is in addition to this, you can also use right behind here, you could use the zip wall insulation board. Another thing it has is that because this um, rock wool is within this aluminum bracket, what that does is it keeps the, um, the rain screen material close to the insulation but not touching it and that's significant too if you compare it to having hat channels the hat channels is going to push the this out even further uh, because then it has the insulation the hat channels over it and then it has this other although this does have a hat channel type 
a bracket here. But this half channel bracket doubles not only as something to hold it up against this, this wall or wall bracket, but it also, as you can see, um, it's black and painted black. So it prevents the water from going into this insulation a bit. Uh, there will be some, but what does, what is allowed in there is um, for it to be running down into the, the channel created by that hat channel. And then if they fasten the, this fiber cement board onto these metal brackets and those metal brackets that is attached to the aluminum brackets, those metal brackets have um, a flange coming out here and it allows for the, the panel of the, of the rain screen to be connected to that flange. Now you can see on this example, you can see the fasteners and depending on what you want. If you want something that shows the, the connect, connectors, the fasteners, that's great. But you can also have a concealed fastener and they have that available too. It's pretty cool. Check out their website. There's a lot of photographs there that shows how the rain screen looks on a lot of different type of applications. And I think you're going to find a design that will really work well for your building as well. So this is one system. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than other systems that you'll be seeing on the, the series of rain screens. But I wanted you to see this because it is a well thought out system. Go check out their website. I'm not an affiliate of them, maybe yet. I don't know that I ever will be, but I am impressed by their system and I really think it's worthwhile looking into. Thanks a lot for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe so you won't miss the series of the other type of rain screens we're going to talk about and how they're applied to the, sh the shipping container side. <laughs>